Uh, for me, my wines are very much about elegance, beauty, freshness, uh, and I think these are important words for Pinot Noir and Chardonnay, um, and I think these express the most that I feel about these grape varieties. Uh, for me, I've been in Australia, I was making wines at Yarra Yearing with Bailey Caritas for 10 years, uh, an amazing experience, um, but my work now is here. Four hectares of vineyards that we farm ourselves is a big obligation, a big piece of work. I, I think running backwards and forwards to Australia, even though very commercially fun and a good marketing uh, opportunity, I don't, uh, I don't have the energy. <laughs> well, I'm getting too old. Uh, but I don't, I don't see the value when I really want to concentrate on my work here in Burgundy. Uh, I, I, I'm so excited to, to be able to do this here in Burgundy. Uh, I don't need to do it in Australia anymore. Uh, I, I don't think we'll ever replace Burgundy. I don't think that's the point, and that's not what Australia and New Zealand, the very good producers, are trying to do. They're trying to create their Pinot Noir from their terroir, from their land, from themselves. They don't want to replace Burgundy. Burgundy is going to make its own problems by creating inaccessible wines because of prices. Uh, and that's purely our problem. Australia and New Zealand already are taking a big chunk of the market and well-deserved. They're making brilliant wines. So Burgundy can't get any bigger. That's the point. Burgundy is, is geographically full, where Australia and New Zealand have a lot to explore and a lot to bring to the market. And don't forget, I think America also has fantastic terroir, especially the altitude vineyards. So I think there's room for everything. There's a great passion for Pinot Noir uh, globally. So there's room for everybody.